Lavoisier had challenged the very foundation of chemistry, and he'd identified the source of that weight gain. Air was somehow involved. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're looking at scientific blunders and false theories that significantly delayed progress or caused major historical consequences. These mistakes remind us progress isn't just about discovery, but sometimes just admitting that you are wrong. Wow, this bed's the jackpot here. Aether theory. The instrument had all the stability and sensitivity they had hoped for, and should be able easily to detect the tiny expected difference in travel time of the two beams of light due to motion through the ether. For centuries, scientists believed light needed a physical medium to travel through. They called it the luminiferous aether, an elegant sounding invisible substance, which ultimately did not exist. This phantom aether was written into textbooks and experiments, forcing physicists to twist their findings to fit a false assumption. The 1887 Michelson-Morley experiment proved no aether existed, but many clung to the idea anyway. That resistance delayed acceptance of a major scientific breakthrough in Albert Einstein's special relativity, which fundamentally redefined space, time, and motion. The aether theory wasn't just a bad guess. It was a conceptual wall that scientific giants had to demolish before modern physics could truly begin. The truth is that either way, success or failure, the results of Michelson's experiment would have faced physics with a grave dilemma. Einstein's cosmological constant. It is called the cosmological constant. And when cosmologists calculated its effect on the evolution of the universe, they realized it had to be very finely tuned indeed. Albert Einstein wasn't done with physics after coming up with special relativity. He also developed general relativity, and with it, introduced a cosmological constant to force the universe to be a static entity. Einstein believed the universe neither expanded nor contracted. Ironically, his equations naturally predicted expansion, but he edited reality to match assumptions. When Edwin Hubble proved the universe was expanding, Einstein reportedly called the constant his greatest blunder. No force in the history of cosmology has ever been discovered to be that finely tuned. The cosmological constant needs to be set to one part in a trillion, 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 trillion. Otherwise, the universe would be so drastically different that it would be impossible for us to evolve. The mistake delayed cosmologists from embracing the idea of an evolving universe and its birth in a Big Bang. Shockingly, modern physics later revived the cosmological constant to describe dark energy. Weirdly, this proved Einstein was both wrong and ahead of his time. Sometimes, even genius fumbles rewrite cosmology. You'd think with all the great successes of the Big Bang, we'd be happy. We wouldn't be complaining. But we, we are. We're concerned. There's a problem with the Big Bang, and the problem is we shouldn't be here. Rejection of Lister's antiseptic surgery methods. For years, he had been worried about the high death rate of patients whose wounds turned septic after operations. So when a colleague, a professor of chemistry, told him about Pasteur's work, he seized on the idea that microorganisms might carry infection. In the 1860s, British surgeon Joseph Lister introduced antiseptic protocols in surgery. He began using carbolic acid solutions, applying it to wounds, and recognized its ability to reduce surgical infections. Unfortunately, Lister's fellow surgeons mocked his practice. They were unwilling to believe what they could not see, that unseen microbes caused post-operative deaths. It was a rejection that came at the cost of thousands of lives worldwide. Hospitals continued operating with unwashed hands and filthy instruments. Eventually, germ theory would prove Lister right. The delay meant simple procedures remained a lethal gamble. Lister didn't just fight bacteria, he fought scientific pride and arrogance, making this one of medicine's deadliest dismissals. We tried copper in Paris and it failed. An alloy with silver is preferable for proper conductivity and corrosion. You were gonna let us use the wrong wire? I never would have let you get that far without me. Leaded gasoline approval. Lead is an old and well-documented poison. As early as the year 100 BC, it was common knowledge in ancient Rome that lead could cause insanity and eventually incur death. Engineers in the 1920s began adding tetraethyl lead to gasoline to prevent engine knocking. 
Initially received and celebrated as a miracle fuel additive, scientists could see through the veil of illusions and recognized it as a potent neurotoxin. These warnings were ignored. For decades, cars spewed the invisible poison across every major city, contaminating air, soil, and generations of children. Modern studies linked leaded fuel to decreased IQ, increased crime rates, and global health damage. Thomas Midgley Jr., who helped popularize leaded gas, became infamous as one of history's most harmful inventors. This wasn't just an innocent mistake. Rather, it was profit over public health, with measurable consequences to date. It seems to me that it's ironic that we end up with ethanol now as a major answer, not the only answer, but as one of the big answers to the fuel problem and the anti knock problem in a way that was perfectly obvious to people in the 1920s. Benzene ring structure misunderstanding. Benzene is an organic chemical compound that serves as a building block in several other important compounds. From dyes to pharmaceuticals, benzene is everywhere. For many decades, chemists proposed various theories to discern its molecular structure. None were deemed fit, and this chemical riddle stalled progress in organic chemistry. It wasn't until August Kekulé dreamt of a snake biting its tail that the first semblance of a correct cyclic structure to benzene emerged. The now familiar ring of benzene opened the doors to various fields and discoveries, including synthetic chemistry, plastics, and modern medicine. Still, decades were lost to incorrect models. Benzene was a puzzle resolved at the cost of time, a chemical key withheld by misunderstanding that delayed entire industries. Phlogiston Theory All the objects in this room belong to Lavoisier's laboratory, of course, but you can see how broad was his mind because he had a lot of other objects because he was interested in everything. Before the discovery of oxygen, all combustible materials were believed to contain phlistogen, a mysterious element released during burning. While it wasn't real, this imaginary substance became scientific dogma throughout the 17th and 18th centuries. Phlogiston was the foundation of chemistry's leading theory for nearly a century because it seemed to explain things like metals and rust. Then, scientists observed that some metals gained weight while burning, something clearly impossible if phlistogen were real. They couldn't come up with a good explanation for this. It took Antoine Lavoisier's experiments in 1783 to dismantle the myth and reveal oxygen's true role in combustion and respiration. Until then, scientific progress stagnated under a superstition that explained nothing, yet controlled everything. The work of these previous experimenters merely hints at what's happening when air is taken up or released by different substances. I shall review all their work, repeat all their experiments, taking new precautions in order to develop a coherent theory. Denial of Continental Drift Theory. Massive forces from deep within the planet rip apart and smash these small proto-continents together as they grow into the large land masses we see today. In 1912, Alfred Wegener proposed that Earth's continents once fit together like pieces of a jigsaw puzzle, but then it slowly drifted apart. Unfortunately, Wegener couldn't provide a mechanism to back his theory and was resoundedly laughed off the stage by the geological community. For decades, textbooks mocked Wegener's theory of continental drift as pseudoscience. Only in the 1960s did seafloor spreading and magnetic evidence vindicate Wegener. By then, a half century of geological progress had been lost. The ridicule that ensued after Wegener's proposal delayed acceptance of plate tectonic theory. It's now foundational to our understanding of earthquakes, volcanoes, and Earth's crust. Earth's greatest scientific shift indeed began with one ignored idea. And this is what paleomagnetism is all about. We can estimate the ancient position of continents by measuring the direction of magnetization from rocks within them. Darwin's initial rejection of Mendelian genetics. For the first time, he could demonstrate that the traits of successive generations were inherited in certain numerical ratios. In other words, there were fixed laws of nature that governed heredity. Darwin's revolutionized biology with his theory of natural selection. Ironically, he also weakened his own theory by rejecting Gregor Mendel's work on heredity. Mendel had shown that hereditary traits are passed on through genes. This contradicted Darwin's belief of blended inheritance, in which offspring inherit a blend of their parents' traits. It was the prevailing model of heredity in his time, and widely accepted by the scientific community. Iguanas land and swimming meant my new theory was winning. It all led in the direction of natural selection. 
But if traits blended completely, it also meant that everything would average out over time, and evolution wouldn't happen. Darwin sensed this flaw, but dismissed Mendel's solution, separating evolution and genetics for decades. It wasn't until the early 20th century that genetics and evolution finally united. Whatever it is that transmits heredity, it doesn't behave like a liquid. It behaves like particles. And it's not like a compound, it's more like a, a mixture. Geocentric model. Ancient astronomy assumed a concept of the universe proposed by 4th century BC Greek philosopher Aristotle, who imagined the Earth at the center of the universe. For thousands of years, humanity believed that Earth sat at the center of the universe, surrounded by planets and stars that revolved about our planet. These beliefs became grounded in the geocentric models proposed by Aristotle and Ptolemy. Rather than be considered as a scientific theory, the geocentric model was seen on an equal footing as religious doctrine. When their hypotheses didn't match their observations, scholars forced the sky to fit the theory. Their stubborn belief in geocentrism stalled astronomy and humanity's own understanding of its place in the universe. It would take a trio of intellectuals in Nicholas Copernicus, Galileo Galilei, and Johannes Kepler to challenge this theory and ensure the emergence of true celestial mechanics. Well, maybe they didn't care at first, but when he published his book, they saw the danger it posed to their theology and they burned him alive. Probably. Right? Nope! In fact, the book barely showed up on the church's radar! Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Cold fusion claims that couldn't be replicated. Unverified 1989 cold fusion claims wasted millions and damaged scientific credibility. And how much energy is this baby putting out for you? Right now, about 20 watts. This is not a lot of energy. No, this is a low power test, uh, which will give us the information we need to scale up to our goal of 10 kilowatts. And how soon do you think you can do that? Four and a half to five years. Asbestos as a miracle material. A miracle mineral turned mass carcinogen after warnings were dismissed for decades. By 1931, the link with disease was so clear the British government passed its first asbestos regulations. They ordered that there should be no asbestos dust in the workplace. By 1935, the link between lung cancer and asbestos became recognized. The Y2K programming shortcut. Two-digit coding stoked fears of system failures and required billions of dollars to fix. Elevators may stop. Heat may vanish. Credit cards and ATMs may cease to function. Airplanes and trains may come to a halt. Steady State Universe Model An elegant but wrong theory of an eternal universe delayed acceptance of the Big Bang. But accepting the Big Bang theory and thinking it flawless are two different things. There were problems with the details of the theory. Expanding problems. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Scientific Racism Looking at these, we can start to imagine what it was like for 19th century men of science when they first saw Morton's beautiful yet troubling illustrations. Humans will seemingly use any excuse they can to discriminate against and oppress each other, and scientific racism has been one of the most pernicious. This is the idea that there are biological differences between races that make some people inherently superior to others. Unsurprisingly, it gained popularity in the Western world during the 1600s, when the transatlantic slave trade was taking off. It allowed enslavers to convince themselves that African people were subhuman and didn't deserve rights. You examine this piece of skull here. <laughs> You'll notice three distinct dimples. In the early 1800s, white people got really into phrenology, the belief that you could determine someone's intelligence by measuring bumps on their skull. Though scientific racism has been thoroughly debunked by biologists, anthropologists, geneticists, you name it, some people still cling to these bigoted ideas today. Grant, a eugenicist, argued that evolution should not be left to chance. He lobbied for laws banning interracial marriages and limiting immigration. Laws passed by people softened up by human zoos and now susceptible to Grant's arguments. Which scientific mix do you think did the most damage? Let us know in the comments.